Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to get your cloud hosting provider set up. And I'm going to be using Linode. They're a sponsor to this channel. And I've also been using them for about eight years. And I prefer them over things like Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure just because they're a lot cheaper. Although a lot of corporations are using Azure and AWS. Linode is, uh, I feel like, the best option for just your, your basic... Uh, Really, I mean, everything from small business, I mean, you could do a lot of large processing on here. They have plans that really fit anybody's needs. But for me, I'm just using a simple $20 a month account here. And what you have to do to get started is you have to go ahead and, and register, set up your username and password, and then you're going to need to pick a specific plan in order to get started with. Like I said, I've actually used a $20 a month account and had hundreds of thousands of people coming to a website in a single month. A lot of that through Reddit and other things like that. So it was mostly just a content application at the time. It was a uh, Django application for a movies website. But yeah, about 200,000 or so. And, and it only used about 10% of my available resources at the time. Now, when you're first logged in with your account here, you're going to be greeted with this option. Like I have the option of rebuilding, but yours is probably going to say build because you're going to go ahead and pick whatever sort of operating system you want to use. I recommend Ubuntu and the LTS version, which is the long-term release. And uh, that, that's like one of the latest versions here. You can see we already have 1904, but I'm going to go ahead and just use a more stable 1804. But you guys can use whatever you want here, but I do recommend a, a Ubuntu. You need to go ahead and create your root password. So after you've done that, you can just click this launch console button. And this is going to pull up like an interactive uh, browser. It just logs you right in. And since you've just started your, your account here, we're going to be logged in as a root user, but you don't usually want to log in directly as root. In fact, you want to create a super user that has what is called pseudo privileges and pseudo meaning that you give this super user most remote uh, or root privileges, but not exactly root. You can really screw things up by logging into your root. So it's just better to create the super user, but we'll see how to do that in just a moment. But when you're dealing with a, a brand new installation though, we need to go ahead and update all the software. So what we're gonna do is say apt get space update and upgrade. Upgrade, did you guys ever see uh, Idiocracy? That's a great movie, you should I definitely recommend it. It's sort of where society's headed, I think, uh, if we're not already there. So here, this is going to install all the latest security patches and things like that that you need for your Ubuntu server. And it's really important that you do this because, um, you know, just by your, your default configuration, you're probably not going to have all the latest stuff that you need. All right, here we're going to say that we do want to restart it after everything is installed. All right, so after that's done, we need to go ahead and set our host name. Our host name is really just a name that is associated with our server. It can be whatever you want, but it should be something unique. You don't want to use like www. I'm going to use Bayside. I mean, you can use the name of it, like any sort of planet or anything you want, but it's really up to you. Just make sure it's somewhat of a unique name and just keep in mind, it also has nothing to do with your domains. Like, so I, um, I own like 15 different domains. I can actually have 15 different websites hitting my same Linode instance through virtual host. And we'll see how to do that and uh, at a later time. But the, the point is though, is that your host name has nothing to do with your domain name. All right, so let's go ahead and create that now. We're gonna say echo, and then this is gonna be whatever host name you want. So I'm gonna say Bayside, and then tell it the uh, to go into the host, uh, host name location. All right, and then after that, we're gonna say host name, hyphen F, and this should be capital F actually. And go into the ETC folder, host name. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and navigate to that. Sorry, typo there, it's actually host right there. So let's go ahead and into that folder. All right, let's just go ahead and edit the mug. All right, sorry, I thought that was a folder. All right, so now here is where we can go ahead and add the reference to our host name that we just created. All right, so what you have to do here is put in the actual IP address that is associated with your Linode server, and you can find that on your dashboard page. 
And we're just going to put this, uh, this server location in here, the IP address. All right, so here what I can do is I can use my host name that I just created, and then I can actually use a domain that I, that I own. So I could say something like newmusic.com since I own that. And then we're just going to give it the name of our host name. So press Control X and then Y to save it and press Enter. And now you've saved it. So if we go ahead and look at this again by saying, I don't have to use the pseudo. I'm used to doing that. But just say nano uh, host. You can see that we now have this saved uh, updated host file. All right, Control X will exit out of it. All right, next we need to go ahead and set the time zone for our server. And this is just something you have to do one time. A lot of this, in fact, all of this setup is just something you have to do one time. So we're going to go ahead and configure TZ data, which stands for time zone data. Uh, DP. Oh, I'm sorry, it's reconfigure, not configure. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and select the U.S. And then I'm on the eastern, uh, east coast. So I'm going to go ahead and set the time zone. So now our server is all set up there. All right, so we've been logged in as our root with root privileges. And what we're going to do is go ahead and create a separate user, which is what we're going to log into our Linode uh, in the future. So that way, if you ever need to elevate root per permission, um, then you're going to use a sudo command in order to do that. But let's go ahead and create our user. So we're going to say add user. And then this can be uh, username, like whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, it could be admin. It could be something like that. It should probably be something a little bit more specific. And honestly, I'm not going to, I'll show you guys what mine is because then people could try to log in with it. So upon doing that and pressing enter, you're going to be advised to enter your password for that user. There's going to be some optional stuff as well, like a full name. You could put like a building and all this other information about the super user, but you could just press enter to leave it all blank. All right, the next thing you need to do is say add and then whatever your username was. So whatever it was, and then say sudo. And this is just going to say... Uh, not add, uh, but add user, and and then whatever the username is, and then sudo, and then press enter. All right, guys. So now that you've done that, you're now going to see whatever your host name is, and then your login. So you're going to go ahead and log in with your super user. So go ahead and put in the user ID and then the password. With the way everything is set up right now on your Linux server, people can just log in to your account, or at least try to log in via ssh so what we want to do is actually create an ssh key value pair which is encrypted on your local machine which is going to be used for authentication and it makes it much harder for people outside uh, of your network or outside of your computer system to be able to log into this linode system one of the common hacking attempts is that you will have hackers that will try to log into your server over and over again, guessing different passwords using a brute force attempt where it just uses millions of passwords over and over again. So enabling SSH is going to allow us to have much more control over who can log in. And then we're also going to see how we can install a program to also lock people out when they try to brute force um, our server. All right, so in order to set up the SSH, let's go ahead and open up a command line on your computer that you're actually operating on. So not, not Windows, I mean, I'm sorry, not Linode, but on, uh, in my case, it's Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the keygen right now. So I'm gonna say SSH keygen. If you have Windows 10, this should be installed automatically, but you, if you don't have this, then you need to install OpenSSL. The number one, uh, just, op just install OpenSSL. All right, so this is going to create this encrypted key value pair. Now, it's going to ask you if you want to just use the default. So just press enter to do that. Now, the passphrase is something that you're going to want to have to enter in every time you go ahead and SSH. And that's actually the more secured option. If you didn't want to use a passphrase, you could just press enter. But I suggest that you do use a passphrase. So after giving the passphrase, go ahead and press enter. And you sh should see this like weird looking image and a, a token that gets shown up. Go back to your Linode, make sure you're signed into the super user account that we just created. So now on the Linode, we're gonna go ahead and create a directory. So go ahead and say, and we might have to use this sudo command as well, but um, say, actually, no, we probably don't need to. Uh, we're gonna try it without the sudo command first. Uh, make directory, and we're gonna make the um, SSH directory. So. This should be .ssh, 
And we need to change the permissions on it as well. So just type all this stuff in. This is going to change permissions for the directory that we're creating. All right, so hopefully you guys can see all this. Put that in to your Linode, press enter. Now we need to switch back over to our computer. All right, so now in order to enable this on our computer, we need to go ahead and go to the command line again, type SC SCP C colon backslash users. It's gonna be whatever your username is for your Windows machine if you're on Windows. And now we're gonna say dot SSH forward slash ID RSA dot PUB. And then here we need to go ahead and put whatever our username is at our Linode domain name. So uh, or don't uh, IP address, whatever that is, like just put it in here. And for security reasons, I have to blur all this stuff out. All right, put a colon, put a squiggly, forward slash dot SSH, forward slash authorized underscore keys and press enter. Now you're gonna be prompted with this that it, 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 you can't establish identity and this is something that every time you're connecting to a server through SSH for the first time, it gives you this warning. So just type yes. And then you can see it perma permanently added um, our IP address to the known host to be able to connect to the server. And then we need to go ahead and put in the password for our Linode server. All right, if everything goes well, you should just be prompted with this ID underscore RSA dot pub. All right, guys, so the next thing that we need to do is we want to go ahead and that process that you just saw for creating a key value pair on your computer is what you would have to do for every single computer that you want to connect to your Linode machine. So if you want to do that, uh, if you want to connect to your Linode through multiple different machines, then this next step is going to be optional, but it's something that I do recommend. I think you should go through that process we just went through to generate the key value pair, you know, pair it up from your machine to the Linode, just like what we did. Uh, but you have to do that for every computer, and that's really the safest way. So we can go ahead, now that we've done that, we can edit some stuff inside of our SSH config. So if I say sudo, make sure, number one, uh, say cd forward slash, right? That's going to put you in your root directory. So if I say ls, um, you can see that we're in the root directory. And if I go into the etc, uh, ls shows you everything that's in there. And go ahead and say, go into the ssh folder. And then now we want to say sudo nano, which is like a text editor built into uh, Linux, Ubuntu, uh, or just Linux in general, maybe even Unix, I'm not sure. Uh, and just say sshd config. And this allows us to actually edit the file. So in here, what we can do is we can look for something that says uh, we want to look for the authentication section. So just use your uh, your down arrow. And you can see this authentication session here. Uh, it says permit uh, root login. So we want to change this from yes to no. And then also um, we can add a I want to see if the password authentication is in here. Yeah, right here, password authentication, yes. What we can do is uncomment that by removing the pound sign and then saying no. And this allows us to only be able to connect to the Linode via SSH with the key value pair using the setup that we just did. So if I pre press Control X and then press Y to save and then press Enter, it's going to save the command. Uh, and your configuration is now updated to only allow authentication via SSH through encrypted key value pair. All right, guys, so the next thing is also optional. If we go in and edit the config again by saying sudo nano sshd config, um, by default, this address family is listed as any, but if we can actually go and say, you know what, we only want our SSH to connect via IPv4, which is the internet protocol standard. There's now an IP uh, internet protocol standard of six, but for us, like we only need to say INET, We're, we only have to worry about four instead of um, IP six. But if you wanted to allow both, then you could say INET uh, six as well. Now this does not restrict any sort of traffic from other, like th this only affects your SSH when you um, log into your Linode. So it doesn't affect anything else, but for more security, I'm just gonna say, you know, I only allow the SSH connection to occur 
via the internet protocol standard of IP4. All right, so anytime we make changes to our config, we need to go ahead and restart the services. So we're gonna say sudo system ctl space restart space sshd. All right guys, so from here, you basically have your Linode working and set up. There's gonna be a separate video that I'm gonna to touch upon for fail to ban, which is kind of its own subject because we're gonna use uh, an email service so it automatically notifies us if there's people trying to intrude on our network. But with the settings that we've currently instilled, this is probably more secure than most people's VPS. Um, I recommend obviously to do it the SSH key value way, that way, uh, every single computer you're connecting to, you have to go through that process. It makes it much harder for the hackers. Once we do the follow-up video on fail to ban, then you're going to be even more protected. Ultimately, though, you know we're always having to deal with hackers, and there, I'm sure there's other ways. But you know, for the most part, you have to be really, really good to get past some of these uh, intrusion detection systems and safeguards we put in place. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe and have a good day. Take care. Bye.